Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. <laughs> That's smart of you, by the way, to put your headphones on like the outside, because it, otherwise it's like a seatbelt and it crosses your body and it gets really distracting. Like if you're, I don't know, if it, if it like crosses your body, you can't really like you don't have that. as much. Oh, you did it on accident. Yeah, but like I'm perfect, so like why wouldn't it happen like that? Yeah, yeah true. Yeah. I forgot you don't make mistakes. No, I don't. I forgot mm-hmm. about that part. Wow. Do you want to hear? Do you want to hear the first thought that I had when I woke up this morning? Yeah. Which like waking up like the entering like the awakened state of like going from like the dream state to being awake is such a weird state of consciousness. But anyway, for whatever reason, I feel like the first thought that just like happened to come into my mind was that my parents are going to be 60 in five years. You know what? I've never thought about think because we do do think something whenever you first wake up. But, like, thinking about what I think about, I do not know. You know what I mean? Like, because you have a voice in your head when you're, like, thinking. But, like, actually, like, you know, what's the word? Writing it down, like, what your first thought of the day is. That would be super interesting. Yeah, true. A lot of the time, like, it's just dreams that replay in my head. I don't know what I woke up to. I don't know what I did this morning, though. That's a good point. You're kind of playing upon like a what lot your of people. Like, reality in your head was. Especially if you're fortunate enough to wake up and not be, like, rushed. Like, you don't just have to rush and be like, oh, I have to get somewhere or I have to do something. And you're able to just sit t- like sit down and think about life or think about your dreams that just happened. Like, that's usually the first two minutes of my day. And then I forget the dream in entirety from then on. Do you write them down? Well, it's funny. I, I got I developed a proclivity over, like, the duration of maybe, like let's say, like, two months. Something like roughly like that, um, that I would write down my dreams, and you just like over the camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. It's just staring at you. Weird. Just staring at you. <laughs> but I yeah, I developed this habit of uh, of just writing down my dreams, and I realized that you dream a lot more than you actually think you do. Mm-hmm. Like you actually do dream like pretty much every night, but you just have to get into the habit of not waking up and reaching for your phone or. Or your dick, or your toothbrush. I'm just kidding, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, you have to you have to get you have to get into the habit of like, wake up. What did I dream about? And let's write it down. And whenever you do, like, you realize you dream a lot, and you realize how fucking weird your dreams are. I will. I write down my dreams in my notes. Like when I first wake up, if like I remember, like I wake up from a dream and I'm like, that was fucking crazy. Like I'll like get my phone out and start writing in my notes because like my handwriting, you wouldn't be able to freaking read it. But, like, it doesn't make any sense. It's, like, what the hell is she talking about? And the thing that's interesting is, like, years later, like, I'll remember splits of that dream like it's a memory, which is really weird to me. And I'm, like, oh, yeah, I did dream about that. It's, like, stored away somewhere in the back of my mind. Like, I just forget about it. But, like, I've literally had dreams, like, I'm, like, oh, yeah, that's what I dreamt about last Tuesday. I couldn't think of the dream, but, like, that's what it was. <laughs> it's so weird. Wow. Yeah. What have you What have you learned from writing down your dreams? I don't know. Like, there's really no storyline to a lot of them. Like, I'm trying to think. Do you ever pull up my phone and look? Like, just scroll through it really fast. Oh, you write them down on your phone. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even think about that. That's a way more accessible way to yeah. do so. I'm not going to, like, I'm just going to, like, scroll really fast. Because I, I kept a journal, and yeah. I, I saw that as such a task, to te- keep a journal by my bed and then write it down physically. It's too much work. But, like, on my phone, that's I just get it out, and I'm just, idea. like, I'm just, like, and then How I'm did done. How did I, that, that's just, like, it's not like that. Bitch, I'm just so smart. Like, that's, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, A lot of it's just, like. <sighs> Sexual, probably. No. No, a lot of them are like, um, I've actually had murder dreams before. Like one, oh my God, I had this dream the other night where like I was drowning. And that was kind of scary, actually. I remember this dream vividly now. So for some reason, like water was like rising really high in like the place I was at. And so we were all like, everyone from the city was like, mig- <laughs> sounds like City of Ember or something. They were all migrating from like one area to like higher ground for some reason there's this tower and so like we all migrated to the top and then we like were watching the water rise and like the people below were like getting drowned or whatever but like for some reason I wasn't scared I was just like well I'm gonna die soon might as well just like prolong my life as long as I can Mm -hmm. 
and you have the water, water rise, 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 rose, whatever the word is, and I remember, like, the water getting to the very top, and, like, my back started going backwards, and I was, like, trying to breathe, and then, literally, I, the dream ended. Like, I had drowned in my dream, and I was like, this is so hard to breathe, and, like, I just, it ended. Oh, wow. It was, I, this is the first time I've ever heard a dream like that, but, like, it was freaking crazy, and I remember I wrote it down, because it, like, and I feel like if I write them down, like, I remember them better, because it's, like, re- recollection of, like, the memories, like, imagery in your brain, so. Because you're kind of reliving them twice, mm-hmm. replaying it in your mind. Like that, oh, yeah, that happened, that happened, that happened. I'll and tell like, you what, you were talking to me how I find guests before the podcast, yeah. like how I find guests for this podcast, mm-hmm. somebody that would be dope to seek out, I would have to find this person like consciously, but somebody that would be really interesting is like a dream translator, you know, yeah. to where like you sat, like if you were sitting down to me telling me this dream and I'm like, well, actually it just means that you were, you feel a lot of pressure on you and you feel suffocated with life. You should have someone come on here and read your tarot cards, honestly. I would be open to the experience, but I'd probably find it to be bullshit at the end. Oh, okay. So are you not, like, in, like, that kind of – I know you're, like, spiritual, but, like, are you into, like, that aspect? Like, astrology and, like, tarot card and, like, psychics? Or are you kind of eh? – I will say I'm ignorant. I'm pretty ignorant when it comes to that. But like you don't know a lot about it? Tarot cards, I know virtually nothing other than the fact that I was – uh, in between shifts like two days ago and I was in Barnes and Noble and some girl was doing tarot cards like can you do them on your own you're not supposed to do them to yourself like because or maybe she was playing some card game or something I don't know I don't know but like obviously like I don't trust everyone but I think it's interesting like I take everything with a grain of salt like is that the word grain of salt grain of sand Gra- grain of salt grain of salt I was right yeah and so um <laughs> <laughs> but like I like kind of like relate all of the things that I learn and like put them kind of like meld them together so like I kind of am like into astrology I'm actually kind of an astrology hoe like I fucking love it and then I'll meld like science parts of it like dimensions and I'll kind of like put it together in my head and be like that makes sense <laughs> but um what was I gonna tell you oh tarot cards so I had people read my tarot cards and like I was like iffy about it but like the girl who read them like First of all, it was my friend the first time. And, like, it was, like, kind of relatable. This is before I, like, got really into, like, spirituality and, like. like so would you say that tarot cards are kind of, like, an explanation for the personality or sense of self or who you, how you identified to be? It's kind of like fortune telling. So, like, you, like, draw a card. Well, they, like, draw all these cards and then they kind of, like, look at them and then distinguish. Like, you'll, like, meditate upon the cards and, like, decide, like, what you want to find out. Like, you can ask a direct question. Most people don't. But, like, you could be, like, well, I find true love in 2019. Or you could be, like, love life just in general, like, a general subject. And, like, the person will kind of, like, look at them and, like, draw them out and then read them based off of, like, the book that they have and, like, how they, like, in- it's a different interpretation. It's, like, not one set thing. It's, like, how the person interprets it. Which is why I'm like, I be, the girl who read mine, who I was, like, shook after she read mine, like, she was just, like, a normal chick. Like, she was from St. Louis. But literally everything she said, maybe it's placebo because, like, I was, like, connecting the dots. But just, like, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter that it was placebo because the, f- the, f- the fact was, like, afterwards, like, it kind of opened my mind to, like, how things were going in my life. Like, because I was able to relate it to my life. So I was like, that's true. Like, I need to make those changes. Like, I never see it as this is going to be the future. I see it more as, like an evolution of growth and like like there's do you think that's the explanation as to why they're always different because you're going to get them at different points in time and you're going to be different like chasing different adversities and different challenges that you're going to be conquering maybe and i think it's also just based on interpretation it's kind of interesting to see how someone like views you like how they read the tarot card is kind of like how they view you and so oh interesting like someone that's why you kind of want people who are like more like self-aware i feel like because like of course, you can, anyone can get a set of tarot cards and be like, I read your future. Ha, ha, ha. Come to me. Like, I'll tell you everything. But, like, maybe they're not, like – because, like, some people can, like, get a read off people really easily. Like, they meet someone – I'm out of breath from talking so much. Um, they meet someone, they can just, like, get a read. Like, oh, I understand them. Like, this is their intention. This is their motivation. I like them. And then, like, of course, there's the people, like, a few months that are, like, being like, I don't like them. And you're like, well, I told you you wouldn't like them. But, like, you know what I mean? So you can have negative readings as oh, well. Oh, for sure. They can be fake. Of course they can be fake. What do you mean fake? Like the person's just like making shit up. Oh, okay. Like I don't, I wouldn't, 
I don't like believe everyone's a psychic. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I don't Do you know. believe in psychics? I don't know. Like, I think there's something to be said about like having like visions, and like I think it's interesting that in like other like cultures, like they'll have like someone like a long term fortune teller, like it's like passed in the family, like someone who has like the gift of vision or something like that. Like I think it's like interesting, and like noticing like those kind of qualities and like people I know and like like intuitive like kind of qualities and like maybe myself a little bit like I'm like you know I think it is kind of real honestly I don't think it's to the extent that like movies make it look like like oh well I see this happening in two years I think it's more like you kind of just get a vibe for the person's path that they're on right now but that's open to interpretation because I don't really know so (laughs) that's just like where my mind's at I I would like to meet somebody that's like critically acclaimed like they've made some pretty drastic uh Oh yeah. Conclusions about the future and predictions about the future, and they're still correct. Have you read The Alchemist? I have. Paulo Coelho. So I read that book, and ever since then, I want to meet like a fortune teller because, you know, he met the fortune teller, and she like told him how everything was. And years later, he went back to find her, and like I don't remember exactly what the story was, but like ever since then, I'm like, you know what? I would love to get my like my lifeline read. Mm-hmm. And, like, a culture that that's, like, actually valued in. You know what I mean? Like, it was, like, I don't remember exactly where the book took place. I think it was Egypt area. Um, I'm trying to think of a good culture to go to. I'm, I'm thinking India. India is the country yeah. that's coming to mind right now. Yeah. That could be, like, way off. Definitely, I maybe. Something middle, like, eastern. Like, so definitely it would be more, it would be more eastern. It wouldn't be, like, Amsterdam. Uh-huh. Fortune teller. But, like, I think it'd be interesting. I actually was driving past a psychic today, and I was just thinking about it. Like, whenever I was driving past, I was like, what would happen if I walked in there? Like, but it, would it be fake or real? I I don't know if I'd actually pay for the service, but just to walk in there and, have like, talk to them. I was like, that'd be worth my time. I might do it. I drive past it pretty frequently. It's on my drive is it to on, work. Is it so. on Glenstone? It's on Glenstone, yeah. I know which – it's a psychic on the fr- – I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the first time I ever got my cards read – was at this like festival like santa i don't remember it was in kansas city it was in lee summit area but like Uh i actually took (laughs) my ex-boyfriend there with me and i got my cards read and he was like standing back and like later my cards and she's like is that your like boyfriend and i was like "Mm, no i guess not she's like well he's not your true love like you are never gonna get married and i was just like okay like that was fake as fuck but whatever like that was bullshit like that wasn't real but like I feel like people who are more like subjective or that's the word yeah sub- no, it's objective I don't know like the more open like they're more open to like what could objective objective yeah they're more open to like what could happen and so like it's not like a set in stone like past present future I don't know I wonder what they're trained on because like that's gonna have a big emotional reaction with you you know that's not the person. That person that you think you love right there, that's not the person you're going to love, like, long term. Like, I didn't believe that. You know, that. like, what, what if she's, like, uh, what if they're just trained to provoke an emotional reaction or response, like, a certain response, and that's what they, like, thrive off of. Whether it be positive or negative, it doesn't necessarily matter. I think there is people like that, obviously, but I think there's also, like, people who, like, genuinely, like, are intuitive and, like, can kind of feel, like, the vibe of the person. I, I love I genu- the thought of those people existing. You don't and think that's No, I don't know if I don't know what I think. I don't because I haven't met them. I haven't met them, so I don't know what I think. I'm really open to the idea of those people existing because I love it. It not like it being sounds, a typical fortune teller, but like they could just get like a vibe like you know people that like are very sensitive, like highly sensitive people that like get a vibe off the room. Like they kind of like know how to act. I mean, I consider myself sensitive to a degree. To, like, so I, I definitely I, I definitely believe there are like intuitive people out there. So like you're in But are there future tellers? That's eh. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't freaking know. But I think it's interesting. <laughs> I want more wine. Yes, absolutely. Okay. When can you reach? That was not me making fun of your arm length either, asking if you can reach. No, I didn't even That was think a non sarcastic question. I didn't even think that. I'm not sure. That was so me like, being genuine, so okay. Well, you, you said all of that not in the mic, and I didn't hear a word you just said. Good. Ouch. Let's just go with the conversation. Ouch. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going? New topic? Is that what you're saying? No. Well, whatever you want to ask. I don't know. 
I think I, I think I'd just be I think it's it, it would be appropriate to go into any experience of somebody reading you or anything with a bit like at least a dose of skepticism but not all skepticism like a balance of skepticism and open-mindedness like you gotta you gotta you gotta be able to play upon both and also like take into consideration all of your your fucking biases that are going to be like like somebody might be playing upon maybe you really always wanted to be an athlete and they're like you know you're not fulfilling your true quest because you're working at mcdonald's right now and it's like you're right you know what I'm not, you're right i'm not i'm not fulfilling my true quest and it's like i think you might actually be an athlete and it's like you're wearing like a shirt like soccer is life mm-hmm. or something like that it's like Oh, okay. I think I think I think they're right. You know, they're right. I'm gonna start training again. I think I might actually. I think a pro soccer player is in my future. Maybe it reaffirms what we already know about ourselves. Like maybe like that's like in the back of our head. Like maybe we know like we should go this way. I guess I go back. That goes back to like being intuitive and stuff. Like maybe it just kind of like brings up an idea. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Like, it, like, brings up an idea, and, like, we already think that, but, like, it brings it to, the, like, the conscious part of our brain, like, the tip of the iceberg, and, like, then we're able to, like, dissect it and think about it, but, yeah. Wait, bringing one exactly? Like, a desire or a thought, or, like, maybe a truth to our life, like, we know deep down that we should leave that toxic relationship, but, like, we don't because we don't want to, but, like, when, like, that's brought, I don't know, that's, like, it, that's a theory. I don't really know if I think that or not, but mm. like, like maybe it brings it to like the forefront of your brain. Then you're like, yeah, like I, I need to, I don't know if it like resonates with you. I feel like that means it means something. So if it resonates, like if you're not blindly following things, but if you're like, it resonates with what you think, I feel like that says something about the situation. So going back to what kind of what I was saying earlier, do you think they're trained to like push upon what resonates with you and what doesn't? I don't know, Whether like, it be positive or negative, because if it's getting a response out of you, then they're kind of doing their job in a way. So is it manipulation or is it like actual like intuition? I don't freaking. Know. I bet it's both. I bet it's both. I bet it's depending on the individual. I bet it's some people that think they have a gift. I bet it's some people that know they're full of shit. Some people that have convinced, like they know they're full of shit deep down, but they also like they've convinced themselves that they are actually intuitive. And then I bet there are people that actually have some form of a gift. To what degree is it humanly possible to like prognosticate somebody else's future or like to to read somebody and to make predictions about them or to read somebody and make discoveries about them? Because I've heard of some crazy shit happening with like psychics and whatnot, Mm -hmm. too. So I, I don't know what I think. I really don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of divided about the topic. I think I'm more so drawn to those topics and, like, I actually, like, think, like, I know logically, like, it doesn't, like, make 100% sense, but, like, do you think you're based more on logic or emotion? Like, are you, like, led more by your head or, like, how you feel in your gut? I would say logic, but I definitely have that gut feeling as well. Um, If I had to put a number on it, I would say it's probably, like, 60 65 40 35 something like that so it's like pretty middle actually i do see that it's yeah. it's pretty moderate but i would i would say logic is at the forefront but i also i'm i'm a big believer in like intuition and like having a feeling mm-hmm. like having if i have a, i'll say this if i have a strong gut feeling i will most likely put that idea at the forefront even if i don't have much of an explanation as to why you just know it should be there it's just that sense of purpose or meaning or intuition, uh, whatever you want to say. Like like existentially, it just feels right to make that decision versus the one that I'm thinking through. Whether that be maybe because I'm supposed to make this mistake, which is going to shape and form who I'm meant to be, and then I can take on life in a more appropriate manner. Like I usually end up going with that. But if I don't have that, then I think it through with logic, which is with a lot of like – trivial tasks and just 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 um a lot of a lot of uh, life in general you know you got to think it through logically but like on like big decisions i usually i will usually leave that up to my like intuition but like as far as like myers briggs i don't know if you've ever fucked around and taken that oh, yeah yeah <laughs> what's myers briggs it's like an e something i think we talked about this e- we did entj 
ENTJ. And I was like, I think I was, I think I was, because N is the intuition uh, versus logic, right? Mm. Or which one? I know logic's on there yes. at some point. I think it's intuition or sense. Of, no, wait. I E. Or is it feeler? Feeler versus That's intuition? That's towards the end. So I think it's S. But then it's judgment or yeah, yeah, feeler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think Myers Briggs is full of shit or do you think it's true? I think it's I think it's true. I think it's true. I don't think it's the most accurate description of psychological like interpretation of the self. So okay, so I went to I this morning I had an interview at To Be Well. On the east side it's like this like yoga, um used to be on the east side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. East side. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's Halsey, right? Yeah. What is it even? I don't know the freaking words, but he else. used to meet me on the east side. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so that I vibe with in that song. And it, it, remember your point. I just want to make a little side comment. Something I like about in that song is uh, something about growing up, becoming 23, and then you got pressure to take your life more seriously. And I was, I'm 23, and I was like, yeah, I, I kind of see that. I'm like, I'm at the point like people like expect a little bit more out of you, you know? Have you heard the song 22 the by time. Lily Allen? By who? Lily Allen. She's British. No. It's like talking about like how I'm not singing it, but when she was 22, yeah, her future looked bright, but she's nearly 30 now and she's out every night. And it's like talking about how like if you don't have like the typical goal when you're 30 years old, like what the hell are you doing with your life? Like when she was 22, it was okay to do that stuff, but now she's almost 30 now. What? You can't go out. You can't do that. Mm. I don't know. It's like a really good song. It's like catchy. But and it sounds like it tells a story. It does, and Ooh. she's actually really interesting if you like watch her music videos. She's kind of it's like from like 2010 maybe. Like it's like a little bit ago, but like Lily Allen. Lily yeah. Allen, yeah. Lily Allen. She looks like Katy Perry. No, oh, really. Like a shorter version of Katy, but she's British, and but like she yeah she has dark hair, like big blue eyes, like. I'm a huge fan of Katy Perry, and and her boots. Katy Perry's hot. Yeah, she is. You just spilled that out of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I was doing right there. I think I was like That's distracted, funny. you know. Well, <laughs> you you started on, thinking about <laughs> Katy Perry's boob boobs. Yeah, I was like, I have to touch my boobs right now. Like that's fucking crazy. <laughs> I think Katy Perry has really religious parents, apparently, mm-hmm. which kind of blew my mind. Cause I'm like, she she kind of pushes the boundary. I was like, I like that. I like that. But her like. I don't want to say label her like brands kind of changing now because she's not dark haired anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like people associate like dark haired, blue eyed Katy Perry with like different than like this blonde Katy Perry that's out. Like not, no shade. Just like when I think Katy Perry, I think like, what's it called? The, the album with Teenage Dream on it where it's like cotton candy and like the clouds and she's like naked and she like She's a little less mainstream but still kind of mainstream almost. And now she's like completely mainstream I feel like. It's kind of like Taylor Swift too. Like when Taylor Swift Oh, you think she's more mainstream now? Uh, Katy Perry? Yeah. Yeah. Really interesting. Like I think maybe I feel like her, she's less. Her music's not as popular I feel like but now I feel like it sounds like everybody else's music. Which is why I don't necessarily like it that much. Like I don't dislike it but like I feel like her songs back on that album like I don't know, when was that, like, 2010 or 11 or 12? I don't remember, like, five or six years ago. Like I Kissed a Girl, Teenage Dream. Teenage Dream, and, like, that album with, like, Peacock, Teenage Dream, Downlit Circle California Dream. Girls. Yeah, like, that album, Um, I feel like that's what I think of when I think of Katy Perry. I think it was, like, it was really that's popular on the radio. Well. It was, like, popular, but it was, like, it had, like, a meaning to the song, and, like, now I just, like, I can't get into her music, and I don't know why. What's that? What's that new song with her? I was watching the video at the gym today, actually. I mean, I glanced at. It. I wasn't like consciously you're watching like it. Working out on the treadmill, like. Uh, Let's go, Katie. Yeah, Katie. you're killing that video. <laughs> you go, Katie. You go, Katie. <laughs> Katie, go, go. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Uh, something like "Never Really Over." That song. I think that's it. Yeah. Never really. I just like didn't. Li- I didn't fucking like that song. I feel like the music. I'm really big on, like, a beat in a song. Like, kind of like Taylor Swift's new stuff. Like, her song with, um, what's his name? Panic. Panic of the Disco Guy. I don't like that song. It sounds like I a don't fucking Disney song. It's it's really mainstream, in my like opinion. Like Katy Perry now. And, and there's something about mainstream that's, like, brainwashing to me. 
It's just like mind numbing. Like it's m- mind numbing is a great word. Sorry to interrupt you. That was that was fantastic wording. Just uh, incredible wording that you just used. That was like the wording behind, like the semantics behind that is just like it sent such positive vibes my way. You're like I was oh like, my god, like my mouth is tingling right now. Like it's I'm, so fitting. Oh my god, yes. No, it's like mind numbing. Like when I listen to music like that, I'm like oh haha, I vibe to this, and I'm like what the f- who the who is this? What is this about? And then I have to like actually listen to the words to figure out what it's about. Mm. Because I like a song and like I feel like it's not mind numbing and like I can actually like distinguish the meaning like before like actually listening to the words like based on the music. But I feel like it's like this typical pop tune and it's like never really over. Like it's supposed to be like heart emotional, but like I don't feel emotional right now. I feel brain dead. Like what are you talking about, Katie? What? I feel that. I I feel that. Yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah. I mean, they're kind of talking about an emotional topic but it's it's written in like a really Mm -hmm. mind-numbing way really repetitive something it's like it's a sound you've heard you've heard it before and it's not really like challenging your brain to like try different sounds or different i don't know i don't know different interpretations of music yeah i feel that i'm just thinking right now same i've never really thought much on this <laughs> no like when i just said that like do you ever like talk and you like in a conversation like this like thought comes in you're like that's why like i want to say epiphany because it's not that deep but like mm-hmm. that's why oh okay that makes sense like completely this is like a basic thing to think about maybe like, like the the wording for that in english class is the aha moment oh yeah the uh-huh, aha uh-huh, moment uh-huh. <laughs> I get it now. <laughs> no, like, yeah, completely the aha moment. Like, you're like, oh, that was, like, literally so simple, but, like, why the fuck couldn't I think about it? There apparently, and I need to learn this guy's name because I brought him up on another podcast, but this there is, like, there. I think there are about two individuals that are worth, like, multi-millions, like, multi-millions. They might even be billionaires. These no guys are worth a fat check, like a fat <laughs> check. And they've written songs for like major. It's like two people, like two people, majority of pop artists. And if you really think about it, like Taylor Swift, she's a brand. She's mm-hmm. a brand. Like who she is, she's a brand. She's the singer. She's the one in the music videos. But how many other people are going into her music? You know, I mean, like obviously, it, it makes sense to me. It's not the most like esoteric thought to think, Kate or. Uh, Taylor Swift is filming this music video. She needs, like, a camera crew. She needs, like, a makeup artist. She needs somebody on stage that's going to maybe, like, set the stage. She needs, like, a lot of people to perform the actual music video. But how many people are going into her writing, like, the writing of the lyrics? How many people are going into the production it's quality? Like her face is on it, but, like, is that her expression no like she's probably getting the largest percentage of the taylor swift brand but like how much taylor is in taylor exactly it's not all taylor and that's that's the thing about pop music i feel like if you want to go pop you got to lose a little bit of what you actually want to go see halsey have you, do you ever listen to halsey that i don't feel like she's lost that no, that's I the feel thing like, about halsey I feel like she's kept it um i'd like to know what her sign is actually i feel like khalid's kind of that way too Khalid is that way like there's like they're like, like more real Chance is kind of pop. They kind of keep their like their vibe and their aesthetic going. Like I don't feel like Katy Perry, Lady Gaga, Kesha. Kesha definitely lost it. Uh, Taylor Swift, like all of these people, they're so fucking mainstream. Because we think about it, like their first album that comes out, like yeah, of course people change over time. Like your music taste is gonna change, but like I feel like that first album like kind of expresses like what you were thinking about inside at the time because like. That was before there was a, maybe there was a producer, but, like, let's say there wasn't, like, Taylor Swift's first album, for example. Like, there was a producer, but, like, it was, like, her wrote, she wrote, her wrote those songs. She wrote Mm. those songs, and, like, that was how her brain thought, and that was the music that she wanted to go with it. And it's, like, now, like, it's still her, but, like, that's not her, like, maybe it's her thoughts, but, like, those aren't her, like, pure thoughts. And, like, same with, like, first album of, like, Lil Wayne or something. Like, that's how he thought, that's how his music came out, but, like, now it's not that way. And, like, it's not doesn't mean it's bad. It just means that, like, that's not their authentic, like, how their brain, like, naturally works. So, like, that's why I, like, really respect artists who, like, like, I don't know. Of course, Halsey has, like, her, you know, her crew or whatever. But I think it's interesting that she, like, 
writes about like the same subject and like she kind of like transforms each song into like a different thing and she'll like talk about her emotions too like she'll be able to relate song i don't know it's very interesting to me apparently halsey identifies as try by like bisexual bi bilingual i believe Mm -hmm. and bipolar as well try by i have not heard that she she I, I think she like threw like coined that term or somebody coined it about her and she like I was like I love that. She accepted it for a little bit but then later rejected it, which I found interesting. Yeah. That is a really interesting like thought bisexual, bipolar and Bi- Yeah. I don't know if bilingual was it. Maybe it's It was bilingual. I actually oh, I, really? I remember like I just said I don't haven't thought about that but like I remember hearing this now in like an interview that like I was just thinking about. Mm. and she brought up like bilingual or whatever i don't know what i don't know what i wonder what language yeah i don't know but no i in the interview it was interesting she was talking about how like her albums have like been different like stages of her life and like this first one you remember it was like the song like colors like it was kind of like softer like it wasn't soft but it was like i'm heading straight for the castle like very like chill and then like her second one was more like there was some more and like they were all about the same thing but like they were legit like phases of her life and like they kind of represent a different phase of her life that was a complete rant right now it's the line too i'm pretty sure no you're fine (laughs) you're fine i i think that's a really appealing aspect of any artist like Mm -hmm. any any form of creativity that authenticity and also the evolution of like that individual yeah and like she like owns it she's like yeah my fans love if they don't like it like i'm gonna do this music and like they just kind of accept my changes and like plus she does she changes her appearance a lot too so like it's like she never looks the same like lady gaga blonde hair bangs that's how i think of lady gaga mm-hmm. Katie she Perry. might switch her hair color up but. but like when i think lady gaga i think bleach blonde when i think Katy perry i think dark hair and like halsey like doesn't have like one uniform it's her name it's not her appearance because like she changes her appearance so much like in my mind, like, I don't associate Halsey with, like, a certain look. I don't know. I get that. And it's cool because some artists you can kind of grow with and you can kind of – you can start with them and it's like I really like who this person is. And then as you grow, they kind of grow and then they change and you change. And then they might completely switch up who they are and you're like – you kind of get a – you kind of come to a roadblock. And you're like, do I still like them? Are they mm-hmm. still kind of, like, one of my favorites or are they somebody I used to like? And at that point, I mean, it's kind of difficult. Like, that's how Lil Wayne was for me. I used to love Lil Wayne, but now it's like, eh. I don't, I pretty much never listen to Lil Wayne. Like, he'll, he'll make a song every few years that I'm like, hell yeah. But for the most part, I don't really listen to him. His old mixtape stuff, though, I freaking like it. Like, his, it's like 2000, like, okay, honestly, like, I low-key love, like, rap and hip-hop from, like, early 2000s to, like, 2011. Like, I think that's the shit. I think so, too. But anything after, I'm like hit or miss but like anything honestly from like that time period like hell yeah let's go man (laughs) that's probably my go-to music oh for sure and like people it's like kind of embarrassing because like i'm that bitch who will like turn stuff in the car and people are like you like this song and i'm like it's like still yeah like i love gorillas though yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah have you heard of that uh what's up what's (laughs) up he sings echo it's like from like probably like when i was i'm thinking of somebody different T.I. I I love T.I. T.I. is fantastic. Fuck yeah. What's the song with Christiane uh, Christine Aguilera, Castle Walls? What's that album? No Mercy? Have you heard that one? I probably have, but I can't picture it. Oh, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. You know, like, old Christina, like, Fergie. Like, it's just like that. Fergie Ferg. Not even just, like, hip-hop, but, like, pop from, like, 1999 to, like, 2012. What it also has that, like, connection. It has that connection to your childhood. Mm-hmm. To, like, kind of, and I mean, you might even, like, associate it with your, with times that you had less troubles or maybe what you're going through in your life was more innocent or. You're or probably it was just, right, actually. It was just easier or maybe you just like that point in life for whatever reason. I feel like everybody kind of has a bias towards their own, their own uh, early upbringing. Because my parents love music from, like, their junior high years. Mm-hmm. I keep burping. This is so bad. Oh, you're fine. But, like, 
I mean, I wouldn't vibe with that. I mean, like, I like it. But, like, I don't vibe with it. I guess it is songs that we vibe with. Because, like, if you think about it, like, people who love a song, like, even if you don't like it, like, they love it because it was, like, a part of their childhood or is a part of, like, a TV show they used to watch or something. Like, for example, ABBA. You know who ABBA is? I'm not familiar. From my head, I always think everyone knows who ABBA is. Because, like, for me, when I was a kid, like, that was, like, the thing. Like, Dancing Queen by ABBA. Dancing Queen. Feel the beat. You probably would recognize their music. Oh, oh, I've heard that. Yeah, Abba. It's like my sounds like a boob injection. Like if it, like if you were gonna say uh, like the the is it silicon? Is that what they silicone. put in boobs? <laughs> silicone, silicone. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got it. it like you if, got if it. they were like, hey, what's this little this little flubbery boob mechanism? Yeah. Oh, that's that's Abba. That's what that is. I'm freaking that's, dead. That's, that's Abba that you put hilarious. inside your tits. <laughs> Yeah, like, but no, my dad, like, so my dad always played, <laughs> <laughs> my dad always played 80s dance music, and so, like, I associate ABBA with, like, my childhood, so, like, I remember ABBA, I'm like, yeah, 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 but no one else knows the fucking ABBA is, they're like, oh, I like the Beatles, I'm like, I've never even heard the fucking Beatles, shoot me, but, like, literally, like, I didn't listen to that when I was growing up, so. Turn behind you, right there, yeah, go fuck yourself. Oh, man, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Like, I've, like, learned to appreciate it now because, like, but I don't associate with, like, an early time in my life because, like, I didn't, like, I associate, like, ABBA, Falco, Men at Work, like, my that's what my dad and my mom played when I was growing up. Celine Dion, Kelly Clarkson, like, those kind of, mm-hmm. it's funny, like, actually, now that you bring that up, that's, like, completely what I think about. That's interesting. Yeah, it's funny. Disassociations. It's about association because, like, certain songs I'll listen to, I'll be, like, this reminds me of summer of my sophomore year, or this reminds me of fall of my, like, senior year. This reminds me of when I went to Greece, or this reminds me of this. And I'm like, it brings back those emotions. So, like, I won't listen to certain songs I'm feeling a certain way because I'm like, that just reminds me of that. It's really weird. That is really interesting. Do you have songs like that that, like, you listen to and you're like, this reminds me of my freshman year of high school? Well, people think I'm a psychopath because I will – I'm really good at, and it's not mean I'm good at it. I just, I just remember what I was going through at that point in time. And it's just, it's also events. It's not just songs, but uh, not a psychopath. But they think I'm like a freak. They all, at least, like emotional or like detached from emotion. No, because they'll think I'm a freak because I'm able to remember like things randomly like this. So like, like they'll be like, like for example, Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne, uh, Lollipop. That was like the first big Lil Wayne song, and that would have been. That would have been okay. I can't remember that far back, but that was either like for me. It was that like was oh eight. I feel like that was oh, grade. yeah, yeah, so same. Been like seventh or eighth or. The, uh, no, I think, I think it was. Then. I think it was sixth grade for me because I remember so I being in, in a hotel grade. room and it was on a soccer team I left in sixth grade, on my MySpace page. You had a MySpace. Was, and I was uh-huh. looking at this hot girl, uh, this girl that I thought was so hot at the Ooh. time, mm-hmm. and. Her her profile song was the same as mine, Lollipop by Lil Wayne, and I was mind blown. I'm like, this girl's profile song is the exact same as mine. Maybe I can slide in those those messages. Oh, DMs yeah. didn't exist in yet. Fifth grade? Ooh. No, I don't think I tried it. But it, me and my friend used to always talk about how hot this girl was. And That's um, funny. but yeah, it would have been sixth grade. So it would have been either fall or spring of sixth grade. But I remember it coming out in '08. But like, okay, better example is like I I don't know, um, Alejandro, that song by Lady Gaga. Ooh, that song reminds me of seventh grade. I really, I was obsessed with Alejandro like seventh and eighth grade. That song. Wait, what year? What year did you graduate high school? Sixteen. Okay, you are t- you, Yeah, that would have been my 14? freshman year of high school. Yeah. Yeah. And it came out the fall because it, it was at my homecoming. Really? They played at my homecoming, and I had a friend named Alejandro who was on my soccer team. Like, for example, Fetty Wap, um, Trap Queen reminds me of my summer, 4th of July, after my junior year of high school. And I remember being drunk at this, like, party or whatever, and, like, that just reminds me of, like, that time. So when I listen to that, I'm just, like, it, like, ignites a vibe from, like, that time, and, like, maybe I don't like it now, but, like, that's what I associate it with. So, like, certain songs remind me of, like, breakup, certain songs remind me of, like, death, and, like... Like, going through, like, a funeral. Like, when I was in Washington. I don't know. Just, like, things like that. So, let me ask you this. Like, are you able to listen to a song that has a negative memory and still, like, enjoy it? No. Really? I can't. Like, I'm trying to actually not think about Yeah, no. This, oh, my God, this song. This song called It Is What It Is by Lifehouse. I cannot listen to it unless I'm in a certain mood. Like, I love that song. It's beautiful. 
But when I first listened to it, um, I associated it with, like, my first ever boyfriend and my breakup. I was so devastated over this fucking dude. And, like, now when I listen to it, like, it just reminds me of, like, 15-year-old Anna, like, what she went through that summer. And, like, that's the song I listened to, like, during that breakup. So, like, I can listen to it. It'll just, like, remind me of those memories. So if I'm feeling, like, real shitty, like, I can't listen to that song. Like, I couldn't listen to it, like, out of, like, on a good day when I'm, like, happy because I feel like that song doesn't ignite that vibe. Like, I can't. Is, do you have that, too? Or Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I, me, I don't have a ton me. of songs that, like, I can't listen to that I literally just, like, can't listen to because they're, like, they remind, but they'll, they'll remind me, and it's really interesting how linked association and memory and emotion are. Mm-hmm. Like, the association of that emotion to that memory. I feel like the three, like, just go together. And when you think of a memory and, like, the song, like, do you think of, like, a picture in your head, too, of, like, a time? A, like, you do okay. Usually a very okay. specific memory. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to talk about myself again. But the phrase. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my God. This, this girl. girl's a narcissist. Ugh. She's a narcissist. I, like, legit worry about that, though. Anyways. I always try to defeat my narcissism. Yeah. I try, but I probably fall short. The song Hold My Hand by The Fray, I think. Wait, Love Don't Die, who sings that song? I don't know. The I've Frey? never heard that. Love Don't Die. Mm-hmm. Ah, you know? Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay, Getting well, it. I think it's The Fray, but, like, Hold My Hand reminds me of, like, the summer of 2014. I remember, like, driving in my car, like, by Target in my hometown. Like, that's what I picture on that fucking road. Like, that time in my car where I'm, like, this song reminds me of this. It's so weird. Interesting. I didn't that entire that. summer reminds you of that one moment or that just song reminds me of that one moment in my car. That's what I associate that summer with. So like mm. So like I don't the summer I associate with like And it's brand it's so like arbitrary. Like like your your mind's just like, "Oh, this moment right here." It's like, "Why why this moment? Why exactly. what mind? Hey, hey, let's talk this through. Why this fucking moment?" What's like, so significant about this moment? Is there a moment that you remember that you're like, I remember how I felt in that moment, the song I was listening to, maybe the person you were dating. Like, is there like a moment where you're like that? I remember like being me in that moment. Especially whenever there's music kind of entangled to that moment. Absolutely. What's the song? Music takes me back more than anything. It's mm-hmm. crazy how it does that. But uh, as far as, I don't know. I, I feel like I could think back on things. You know, just think back on something and and be able to recall it. I mean, like, whenever you said summer 2014, so that kind of triggered some mm-hmm. thoughts in my head. And, like, I definitely had some some very – I mean, just random moments that came to mind. Like, I mean, I could I could elaborate, but long story short, I, I did have random memories mm-hmm. that came into my mind, like some things that I was going through or some things that I was doing at that point in life. The, the World Cup was extremely prevalent. That was, like, a huge part of that summer for me, so. Yeah, right? You know what would be a cool video? Or, I mean, podcast or whatever? Uh-huh. You play, like, old songs, and, like, you guys talk about, like, you listen to part of it, and you talk about, like, what you think about. You have to be, like, a certain kind of person to do that kind of video, but I think that would be really freaking cool, because everyone has, like, a different memory associated with that song. I like that idea. You should... If you do it, like, invite me. Because <laughs> I like that. Because, <laughs> like, I legit would do that. Like, I think that's, like, I'm thinking of certain songs. I'm like, you know, I could talk about this song. This well, you song. know what? Like, it, would require, just... it would require Wi-Fi, which I'm getting tomorrow, which I have not you had don't have Wi-Fi? all fucking summer. What have you been using? Like, the, which, like, by the way, on your phone? Yes, living without <gasps> Wi-Fi. Oh, um, it's expensive. Leads you to living with, like, only the relying on data. And then you run out of data because you're too dependent on it. And then... You're fucking stuck. And you realize it, it's a really – it's a blessing. It's a blessing to not have something because you're like, wow, I really need Wi-Fi. Like I, I would I, I would really like to have Wi-Fi is a better word to say it. And uh, I don't know. I just – you realize how dependent you really are on Wi-Fi. And I, I know – I like to like research random shit all the time. And I haven't been able to for like a week and it's really annoying. You're frustrated. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> When I was in Greece, I racked up like a five hundred dollar phone bill. Um, you told me about that. That's crazy. Yeah. From, from data? From data. From international fees or yeah. or just data in general? Because I don't remember exactly what happened. Honestly, I must have been being like a selfish bitch and I was just like getting on my phone. But I don't think that's what happened. I think like I literally thought I was attached to Wi Fi, 
but like I also had my like roaming on. So like Were you getting good internet? I'd be attached to Wi Fi, but then I had my roaming on. So like I thought I was, but really I think it was just the roaming like pushing it up an extra notch. I don't really know how technology works, that's not who I am. I just don't understand it. But like literally with my actually it was nine hundred total with my sister there also. So like <laughs> A so you guys were both making the same mistake. We freaking racked a nine hundred dollar phone bill. What the fuck? Are we dumb? And we were on our phones. It was just like the international fees. It was like calling people. Like, oh, my phone won't work. Let me just turn my roaming on. Like, it was just stupid, selfish shit like that. But like nine hundred dollars, and I was like, oh my god. Like, I felt so. Do you think it was your carrier? It might. It was AT and T. So honestly, fuck AT and T. It might have been because the guy told us that we could FaceTime and there wouldn't be an issue. But then I used FaceTime. Uh huh. And then suddenly got a nine hundred dollar phone bill. What so like, the fuck? it was probably my fault. But like, I literally like thought I was taking all the precautions necessary to like, because like when I went to China a few years ago, like, fuck, I didn't have any issues with like international fees. I didn't get charged nine hundred dollars in a month. But like, I mean, I guess I was there longer in Greece and like uh-huh. it was more like on my own time. But like. I don't know how I would have racked. I wasn't on my phone twenty four seven. Like I don't know how that would have happened. Unless, That's ridiculous. You know, and I could be wrong, but I've I've talked to a fair amount of people, and they haven't had any problems with like phone bills. But at the same time, I was watching like some travel vlogs, and they told they said that they racked up like five thousand dollars or like something. Yeah, turn your it was in the thousands. Turn whatever it was. Off. Turn your roaming off and go. What do you? Would you just turn off data or what? What, what the fuck is that? Um, roaming roaming so like i don't even know if i have that you do you do have it so this button turn that off oh that okay yeah that's like your roaming like for cellular data so like if that's off like you can't receive text i mean you could but like through i'm i don't know how to explain it but like i'm not technology minded so through iMessage you can't receive text if you turn it off yeah if it's like a text should i keep it off now i mean do you want iMessage yes i don't 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 know i don't know don't okay, so I'll I'm turn take it. What I'm saying with a grain of salt, grain of sand, grain of sugar. I don't freaking know. Like, just take it because, like, I don't bring it up. Like, at the yeah, same time, I want to bring it up. And bring it up. You know, I actually kind of enjoy this a little bit. It, you're liking the headphones. I like the headphones. You like the headphones. It's kind of like being in like <sighs> an altered state of like. This sounds so weird, but like you're able to process what you're saying differently because like you hear it a second time. That sound. I'm probably tipsy saying that but like i'm you know what i mean like, you sound like a hippie piece of shit that's what you sound like I really? no i'm just kidding i'm totally messing with you but no but seriously like i do sometimes but no i i 